We had this evening uh, the Prime Minister uh, received at the White House by President Trump and Mrs. Trump. Uh, there was a 40-minute one-on-one meeting between the Prime Minister and the President. Uh, this was followed by delegation-level talks, which was about roughly about an hour. Then there were remarks to the press, which some of you uh, had come for. Uh, the the uh, First Lady was gracious enough to host uh, a reception thereafter. Uh, before the reception, the, the Prime Minister also had a brief meeting with the Vice President in his office. Uh, and then uh, the, the President and the First Lady uh, were in, in what clearly was a uh, great gesture, took the Prime Minister uh, for a tour of the White House, including uh, the residential quarters. Uh, and finally, the, uh, the last event was the uh, dinner which was hosted uh, by the President and First Lady, and you know, there was a lot of uh, conversation uh, over dinner, uh, including on, on policy issues. Uh, and this was also roughly uh, perhaps a little bit more than an hour. Now, uh, in terms of uh, my description uh, of the, you know, the atmosphere, the chemistry, in a sense, uh, I think it was, you know, probably the fairest word to use, words to use are that it was very warm, it, you know, it was a very open, very cordial. Uh, there was a sort of almost, there was a great deal of ease between, between the President and the Prime Minister. Uh, they had, uh, as you would recall, three phone calls uh, before the Prime Minister came to uh, uh, U.S. Uh, this was the first time they were actually meeting, but they were really very, very comfortable with each other. Uh, in terms of the discussion, uh, most, a lot of the discussions were on very strategic issues and, you know, took a, in that sense, a strategic perspective on the relationship, on how, how the leaders saw the world. It was also very detailed, it was very ex extensive, and it was very focused on, on certain themes that I would, I would uh, describe to you. Uh, the, the Prime Minister uh, clearly saw the President um, as a force of change, uh, and uh, in the, there were some exchanges between them on their political perspectives. Uh, and uh, uh, now, in terms of the policy discussion, I, I think uh, the overarching theme, if you would, uh, was uh, how India and U.S. were mutually supportive of each other uh, in a changing world. Now, uh, this had many facets to it. Uh, the most obvious, of course, was the strategic convergence between uh, India and the United States. Uh, so there were uh, discussions on defense and security issues, uh, uh, discussions on connectivity. Uh, a number of, uh, I would say, issues and uh, regions came up for very detailed uh, uh, discussions and exchanges, uh, including counterterrorism, uh, Afghanistan, uh, the Indian Ocean region, the Middle East a little bit, East Asia, uh, and issues like uh, the NSG and the UNSC. The economic uh, side, uh, the economic facet was the second facet. Uh, I think, uh, for, you know, what, what we saw was that uh, as a result of the innovation and uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, increased enhanced growth that we expect uh, from the uh, Trump administration, clearly the U uh, U.S. Uh, will, will uh, be uh, 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 the premier engine for growth in the global economy. There was also recognition that India today was a very major engine of growth and uh, appreciation of the structural reforms that the Prime Minister has undertaken and seen through, uh, as well as the fact that he's made it easier to do uh, business in India. Uh, some talk on the tech side, on innovation, entrepreneurship, and in fact, specifically on the digital partnership uh, between uh, India and the United States. Uh, there was uh, the third uh, focus, of course, was on values and the world that India and the U.S. both wanted to see. And here, terrorism was identified as a key challenge to which the two countries uh, would be responding, both separately uh, and together, and with other nations. Uh, and I will, I will sort of uh, give you a little bit uh, uh, more detail on that. 
Uh, the uh, fourth issue was the people-to-people -people relationship, the fact that we have uh, such a strong community here, such an effective bridge between our two countries, what a unique uh, bonding there's been. Uh, and uh, both leaders made references to their uh, exposure to each other's society. President Trump referred to the fact that he had visited India as a private citizen. Prime Minister also spoke of his early visits before he became Prime Minister uh, to, to the United States. So this, this was sort of the, the uh, broad, uh, I would say, the themes and formats and facets uh, of the relationship. Uh, and and uh, again, I sort of stress to you, I mean, there was very visible chemistry between the two leaders, uh, and you could see that, uh, uh, you know, they, they were talking with each other very, very comfortably. Uh, now, uh, before the Prime Minister went to the White House this morning, he received uh, Sec Defense Secretary Mattis and Secretary of State Tillerson. Uh, and at the White House itself, he were, you know, the discussions were joined by a number of other cabinet members uh, and senior <coughs> administration officials. Uh, they included, of course, the Vice President. Uh, in addition to Secretaries Tillerson and Mattis, uh, the, uh, the Energy Secretary, the Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross, Energy Secretary Rick Perry, uh, USTR uh, Lighthizer, NSA General McMaster, um, who are my cabinet level, uh, uh, Mr. Gary Cohn uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Jared Kushner uh, uh, and uh, uh, Dina Powell. Is that I? Huh? Uh, yes, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, Steve Mnuchin. So, so it was, as you can see, you know, really the the sort of uh, um, the, the all the senior figures of the administration were there. Uh, uh, most of them for the discussion, and some of them joined at the, in the, uh, uh, when, when the uh, dinner uh, started. Um, now, uh, I, as I said, uh, one very major uh, issue which was discussed was, the, uh, was how India and the U.S. would counter the uh, threat of uh, terrorism. Uh, I think we've tried to capture the, the uh, sort of essence of that discussion through a joint statement. Uh, I believe it has just been cleared. Would that be correct? Yeah. So I, I think once I'm through with this, most of you would be able to uh, read it. But uh, let me just uh, sort of give you the, the key details of that. Uh, I think there was a recognition today that terrorism is a global scourge uh, and that uh, it must be fought in every part of the world and that the US and India would uh, do this together. Uh, early the, earlier this morning, uh, uh, again, I think most of you know that the State Department uh, did the designation of uh, Syed Salahuddin of the Hezbollah Mujahideen as a specially designated global terrorist. So I think that was a strong signal uh, coming out of the administration uh, that it was committed to ending terror in all forms. Uh, it was agreed that we would have a new consultation mechanism uh, on domestic and international terrorist designations listing proposals. Uh, the, the, there was uh, uh, an extensive discussion uh, on uh, uh, terrorism, what is its epicenter, uh, how is it affecting uh, the region, particularly the region where India is located. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, I would uh, highlight to you that uh, the two leaders called on Pakistan to ensure that its territory is not used to launch terrorist attacks on other countries. Uh, they further called on Pakistan to expeditiously bring to justice the perpetrators of the 2611 Mumbai, Pathan Court, and other cross-border terrorist attacks perpetrated by Pakistan-based groups. In addition to this, uh, the leaders also agreed to expand intelligence sharing and operational level uh, counter-terrorism cooperation. Uh, now, uh, moving on from uh, uh, counter-terrorism to uh, larger defense and security, uh, uh, you know, it, this, this was really an occasion for us to send a message that India was a reliable, dependable partner that was fully reciprocated uh, on the American side. Uh, and there were discussions on the Indian Ocean, on uh, uh, issues of 
um, you know, from Africa to Australia, the, the range of security challenges that arise, uh, also in the Middle East, specifically in the context of uh, uh, security. And much closer home, a lot of discussions uh, uh, on Afghanistan, uh, uh, particularly, and uh, uh, I think many of you are aware there's a policy review which has just taken place out here. So some of that came up for discussion. Uh, on defense cooperation, uh, there was a sense that the combination of convergence on, and regular exchanges on policy, the fact that we were today major partners in exercises with each other, uh, and that we were uh, today had common equipment that India had uh, on in its inventory a number of platforms of American origin, all of these really underline the fact today that India and U.S. saw each other as major defense partners. Uh, on on uh, Afghanistan, which I mentioned, uh, I think we brought out India's commitment, the fact that uh, last year we had made a further commitment, how that is today shaping up. Um, uh, and uh, uh, Prime Minister also expressed uh, our appreciation of the sacrifices that America has made uh, to uh, strengthen democracy, pluralism uh, in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, on the uh, Indian Ocean, as I said, the, the emphasis was uh, on the importance of the rule of law, uh, on the uh, requirement to follow international norms uh, and ensure freedom of uh, navigation. Uh, you will also see in the uh, joint statement uh, a common position that the two countries have on the issue of connectivity uh, that underlines the transparent development of infrastructure utilizing responsible debt financing practices while ensuring respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, rule of law, and the environment. Um, on the economic side, uh, there were the, most of the economic discussions were at the delegation level talks and uh, some over dinner. Uh, I, I would sort of uh, sum up a, a very, uh, very um, uh, sort of productive discussion as a, a, a sort of uh, an assessment that the economic changes in both countries are creating uh, new demands. And once you know you have this high level of comfort between India and the United States, the other partner is well placed to meet those demands. Is in fact the natural partner to whom you turn to for such demands. Uh, and then uh, example, some of the examples which, were, which came up was, uh, I think many of you know that the civil aviation sector uh, in India is today probably the fastest growing civil aviation in a major economy. Uh, and you have therefore, uh, I believe that the number of uh, domestic travelers has crossed 100 million in India. Now, uh, you have obviously a demand for new aircraft uh, from a number of airlines, and uh, uh, big, you know, uh, so it's quite natural that these orders, many of them, would be placed on the United States. And uh, I think you also heard some appreciation from the president himself uh, of uh, uh, the fact that uh, these orders were coming uh, to American companies. A second example would be in the field of uh, natural gas. Uh, the fact that from next year, the U uh, in you know the LNG from U.S would start flowing to India. Uh, in fact, we expect uh, over the next many years that this would be in excess of $40 billion. Um, and uh, we could, you know, uh, a number of other examples uh, were, were discussed. Uh, and uh, uh, I would say there was a sense today that, you know, both, both countries should encourage uh, in each other that, uh, that uh, uh, effort to to be the natural, to be the preferred partner uh, when it comes to economic issues. Uh, as uh, you would expect on such an occasion, there was uh, uh, discussion on trade matters. Um, is, you know, it was, some of it was very broad about market taxes, about regulatory issues, about barriers. I, I think both, both leaders underlined the emphasis of uh, free and fair trade. Uh, and uh, there was some some details as well which came up, but overall uh, it was a very, uh, I would say, a very uh, useful uh, and a, a discussion which really 
led the other party to believe that their issues were being looked at seriously. We also had issues which U.S. was looking at seriously and the other way around. I should again add that uh, before the visit, actually, we had discussions both with Commerce Secretary Ross and with uh, USTR, uh, U.S. Trade Representative Ambassador Lighthizer. Now, uh, moving on from the economic side, uh, I would highlight the energy basket uh, discussions, as I said, on LNG and gas, on solar, uh, the leading role of the United States as, as a uh, as an uh, innovator on the solar side. Uh, on uh, clean coal, uh, the fact today that there was a lot of interest. The U.S. has a very impressive clean coal uh, capabilities that we felt we could work on, uh, as well as on nuclear. Uh, and uh, we are, you, you will find uh, most of that, again, reflected in the joint statement. And our expectation is that uh, Westinghouse, we were told uh, that by the end of the year, Westinghouse would really uh, rework its its current situation uh, and really be back in business. Uh, on the uh, innovation side, uh, I think there was uh, uh, there was discussion uh, on the digital partnership. Uh, you know, the prime minister believes that just as uh, democracy uh, was the great contribution, the great political contribution of the United States uh, last century. Uh, the uh, innovation is can can is uh, the the major uh, sort of uh, contribution of the U.S. Uh, in the contemporary times. So, uh, how to improve the enabling environment and you know uh, some you know discussion on the exchanges that that take place. Uh, and uh, here I would draw your attention to the fact that the prime minister yesterday hosted. Uh, uh, had a uh, now meeting with a number of CEOs. So 20 major CEOs uh, met him, many of whom were associated with the digital world. I mean, today, frankly, everybody in some form, even the manufacturing people are associated. And, uh, the, you know, you, you had, uh, for example, Tim Cook of uh, Apple really saying that uh, Apple today was uh, hosting, what he said, 100,000 100, uh, apps which had come out of India. Uh, so that the importance of that digital partnership, I, I think, was one one issue which came up. So, so this this I, I I think this remarks I I don't know if I missed out anything major, but this should broadly give you a sense of uh, what were the themes of the discussion, what was the flavor of the discussion, uh, and uh, again, as I said, it was a it was a very comfortable discussion, very freewheeling, very you know. Between, between two leaders and cabinet members. Uh, you know, everybody spoke their mind very, very um, candidly. And, uh, you know, it, it was really, uh, I, I would say, frankly, uh, one of the most uh, productive visits that I've seen in the United States. I, I said that at the start. Do you want to add to No, I, I think that's, I think Foreign Secretary summed it up. I, I really just wanted to say that I mean, having sort of been involved in the working of the program from day to day, I just wanted to underline that the uh, White House really took a lot of care to craft a very special program for the day. And uh, I think, as the as, uh, Foreign Secretary mentioned, there was a dinner, uh, in the first dinner, and there was a tour. And also the, 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 the fact that the First Lady hosted a sort of pre-dinner reception and was present for, for large parts of the day. And, and so were the other family members, as, as some of you saw them. And uh, so I, I, I think that the fact that they really wanted to uh, go out of their way uh, to enable uh, the, the right atmosphere for the discussions was very obvious. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Foreign Secretary, and thank you very much, Ambassador. We have precisely five minutes now, so uh, I will open the floor for maybe four or five questions. Uh, and uh, please be brief. We'll take all the questions together, and then I'll request Foreign Secretary to answer. Uh, those who did not ask in the morning session will be given preference. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Um, 
Lalitja. Yeah, Lalit from PTI. So, uh, did you see any commitment from the U.S. side to act or take tough uh, action against Pakistan because there is no doubt about the safe havens existing there? And also, uh, did the U.P. elections uh, uh, change the dates? Uh, was he planning to come earlier while the invitation was for the earlier dates? Okay. You, you are first row here. Hi, sir. I'm Ashok uh, from ANI. Uh, is there any confirmation uh, regarding uh, the invitation of Prime Minister to come to India? And uh, is there... Invitation of... Yeah. And is, is there any speci uh, special, uh, specific uh, occasion in India? Yeah. Peach. Uh, thank you very much, Raghubir Goel. I'm with the India Globe in Asia today. Mr. Secretary, you have covered... Many, many yeah, prime ministers. Question, My sir. question is, sir, as far as our Indian American community is concerned, their issue is H 1B visa, and prime minister is very famous in America because of our community. Thank you, sir. First row here. First row. So, adding uh, to what uh, Lalit has just asked, I want to understand, sir, even though you say that both the leaders called on Pakistan to stop uh, terror there, but the very fact that the statement that was read out by President Trump did not mention cross-border terrorism, hence my question, sir, that do you think India has been able to achieve what it was seeking to achieve when it comes to countering terrorism and isolating Pakistan? Thanks. That was Times okay. Now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, we, we, you, you mentioned that uh, both countries called on Pakistan to end terrorism. <laughs> Over the years, there has been a feeling that there is a need to cut military aid to Pakistan further. Did you see Donald Trump expressing anger with Pakistan for not reigning in terror groups? And do you get a sense that military aid to Pakistan would be cut further? And if I could pack in one small question about Srinivas Kuchi Botla, did the issue of racial attacks against Indians, even though it might be an aberration, it might be one-off incident, did the security of Indians abroad come up in the discussions? Okay, so for the moment, I would request for the secretary to answer these questions. If we have at all any space uh, or time, we'll, we'll maybe, try. Maybe take one or two, then I can uh, be uh, uh, done with it. Yeah. Uh, where is the mic? Uh, right there. I, I, where is I the mic? There are mics both sides. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yusuf Peach. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Hi, sir. Uh, on the designation of uh, Sayyid Salahuddin today and the fact that a statement, a phrase was used that the Indian Valley is being turned into a graveyard for uh, Indian forces. The Kashmir Valley has been turned into a graveyard for Indian forces. Did that who, context come up? Who used that phrase? The State Department. State Department. Press the U.S. State Department press Indeed. release. State Department cited that as one of so is that indicative of the fact that the United States is now giving moral authority to India and India's fight in Kashmir uh, Valley? And what is the sense in understanding? Did this okay. come up in okay. the okay. Okay. Last okay. question here. Yeah. First. Sir, I'm Deepak Chaurasia from India News. My big question is that when the Pakistan issue was taken, PM said that we have surgical strike. और किसी भी कंट्री ने उसको लेकर रिएक्ट नहीं किया क्या उस सर्जिकल स्ट्राइक के बारे में किसी भी तरह का मेंशन या कोई डिस्कशन हुआ ओके व्हाट आई विल डू आई विल सॉर्ट ऑफ क्लस्टर द क्वेश्चंस बिकॉज़ देयर लॉट ऑफ पाकिस्तान रिलेटेड क्वेश्चंस एंड देन मे बी कम टू द इनविटेशन द कम्युनिटी रिलेटेड क्वेश्चंस देयर आफ्टर uh, and small, you know, what Lalit asked about the dates uh, of the visit. First of all, you know, dates of the visit were a very straightforward uh, affair. As you know, uh, you know, the Prime Minister was busy uh, with the elections in India, so uh, the question of uh, uh, planning before March did not arise. And then we had to find what was a common calendar. So there was, I mean, it happened on June 26. It, if it was convenient, it could have happened a week before or a week later. I think it was, there was nothing other than convenience uh, in that case. So let me now come to the Pakistan issue. Uh, I think what is the uh, uh, key, uh, the, the key sentence, and I do realize that you have the disadvantage of not seeing the joint statement because it has just came out. You know, it's not entirely our fault. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the sentences, the two sentences, they called on Pakistan to ensure that its territory is not used to launch terrorist attacks on other countries. 
Now that's a pretty clear cross-border reference to me. But just in case you want cross-border explicitly, the next sentence gives you that. Uh, it says, the further called on Pakistan to expeditiously bring to justice the perpetrators of the 2611 Mumbai, Pathan Court, and other cross-border terrorist attacks perpetrated by Pakistan-based groups. So I think you can't um, uh, get it uh, uh, clearer uh, than that. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, other uh, other uh, issue which I, I uh, want to uh, yeah, bring up was uh, in terms of military assistance to Pakistan. Look, there was a broad discussion on uh, Pakistan. It was broad. It was also extensive. In some, on certain issues, it was very detailed. Now, exactly what action the U.S. would take consequent to that discussion. Uh, that is for the administration to to uh, indicate. Uh, so it is not something which, you know, they're going to tell us that, well, you know, tomorrow morning we are going to do that a bit. But what we had was uh, very much, uh, you know, a converging viewpoint of uh, what is the problem, let's diagnose the problem. And it's not just an India situation. I mean, uh, I think a lot of the discussions also related to what was happening uh, in the case of uh, Afghanistan. Uh, and in fact, there are a number of other countries who have also raised this issue, saying that their terrorism uh, concerns also emanate uh, from the same source. So what, what the US does as a follow-up to this conversation, I think that's really in fairness for the uh, American uh, official at some point of time uh, to answer. Uh, in terms of the uh, uh, Said Salahuddin uh, uh, designation, uh, I think you should take the step for what it is. You know, it is, uh, in a sense, fixing responsibility, highlighting a problem. Uh, you please read it along with the fact that I'm uh, giving you a sense of what the discussions were. So it, it, there is a context to it. There is a signaling out of it. It is focusing on a particular group and a particular individual. And you all know, you know the, the sort of details of all of that. So I, I think none of us can really uh, miss that message. Uh, the um, issue of uh, the uh, uh, surgical strike did not uh, explicitly uh, come up. Uh, and uh, yeah, okay. And uh, on the, uh, you know, the H-1B uh, issue, uh, you know, there was a lot of discussion on both yesterday with the business as well as today with the administration, including uh, at the levels of the leaders, about the digital partnership. And I think when, again, when the joint statement will come out, you will see references uh, in that uh, to the importance both of the digital partnership and somebody else asked that question of the importance of the Indian-American community. Uh, so I think people do recognize that the Indian-American community has played an extraordinary role as a bridge uh, in building this relationship. And so I think when you value something, uh, it's, it's very obvious that you would take care of what you value. The uh, last issue, uh, uh, invitation to uh, President Trump to visit uh, India. Uh, yes, the Prime Minister extended a visit, both uh, uh, when he was, I think, speaking at the Rose Garden, but also uh, at the end of his uh, discussions. Uh, the, the President accepted it, but, you know, again, I don't have a specific uh, time. Thank you very much, sir.